just an update on the West Bank. The ongoing genocide in Gaza and the effects of it remains extremely dire. More than 30 Palestinian children in Gaza have died of malnutrition that we know of in recent months. 16,000 children that we know of have been killed. 16,000. And 40,000 plus Palestinians killed. The official toll is around 37,000, but that doesn't count the thousands and thousands that are unaccounted for and under rubble. And even those people unaccounted for, probably, if you were to include all of them as dead, probably is still lower than the real death toll. And that's part of, I think, the urgency that uh, that the Israeli government is uh, engaging in as it relates to the genocide, because once independent investigators get into Gaza, what, what we will find out will be, I mean, earth shattering. Yeah. And the flip side is like, it's not just death. That is a pretty uh, unbearable condition to uh, live through in that part of the world. Like the amount of starvation and the amount of just people displaced by missiles in places that they were told they were safe. There be millions of people being marched up and down a uh, coastline um, yeah. in the midst of a genocide. I heard this uh, in Democracy Now!'s headlines today, and Amy Goodman made this point that children in Gaza haven't been to school in eight months. I mean, just like thinking about what what their what life... What future's being foreclosed. Yeah. Though. How can you live your life... How can anyone in Gaza live their life? Live their life after this? Um, and so it's just the most horrible news story I've ever lived through, and I, I say that st- um, still... And in the West Bank, things aren't really going great either, obviously. So um, the occupied West Bank was always the next target. The landmass is much larger. That's where the settlements are uh, growing under uh, the Israeli government's permission structure. The landmass is much larger for the West Bank in terms of what they want to see is it borders the Jordan River, Jordan and Syria. And... Israel is moving their war aims to the north in southern Lebanon, where they're um, preparing to fight Hezbollah, likely in the next few days. Hezbollah has a much more formidable and well-funded fighting force than any of these militias in Gaza. So it's going to be an entanglement for the Israeli government that I think is not going to end well for them, because the Biden administration has shown complete deference to this far-right genocidal colonial state. But... In terms of like involving the U.S. in a wider war, I think Biden actually quite is uh, very reticent to engage in that. Honestly, so at least the exchange with Iran was positive. You know, it's hard, hard exactly. to bank on too much in the future, but that was good. That was good, <laughs> and um, this, but but without U.S. support, if Israel's engaging in a uh, as a pariah state at this point in a war with Hezbollah, that's really overextending themselves. And I think doesn't spell a good future for the Zionist project, which I'm okay with. I just, God, so many people are going to (laughs) die. Um, that's, and it's horrible. So in the West bank, this new story came out yesterday. Uh, Bezalel Smotrich, who is the far right finance minister of Israel and basically the de facto governor of the West bank appointed by Netanyahu, um, is, getting more power in the West Bank. Um, And a reminder of who this guy is, earlier this year, Smotrich had said that there's no such thing as the Palestinian people. He declared him and his family the real Palestinians. He said that at an event in Paris in front of a map of Israel, in quotes, that included Jordan, (laughs) just in the West Bank, of course, but also Jordan. He is one of the most vocal advocates for annexing the West Bank in this government. And... Here's some reporting on his uh, increased authority in the West Bank from The Guardian. The Israeli military has quietly handed over significant legal powers in the occupied West Bank to pro-settler civil servants working for the far-right minister Bezalel Smotrich. An order posted by the Israel Defense Forces on its website on May 29th transfers responsibility for dozens of bylaws by the civil administration, the Israeli body governing the West Bank, from the military to officials led by Smotrich and his defense ministry. Now, let's just stop here for a sec. Um, And 
you can just see in the framing, and it's never really talked about within the context of this war, again, I'm saying in quotes, you see there, just in that sentence, the Israeli body governing the West Bank. We're pretending like this is a sovereign nation in this war. If the United States was massacring its own civilians within its borders that the United States controls, would we call that a war? Would we call that a war? Or would we call that a slaughter of, civil of fellow people under United States control? And like, say they weren't officially citizens. Say they were, say, like, undocumented Say they people. were colonial subjects. Right. Um, in, in a modern context, say they were undocumented migrants in this country who didn't have status. And we were just killing them in mass. Would that be a war? <laughs> or would that be what it is? It is the latest coup for Smotrich, who became finance minister and a minister in the defense ministry after a coalition agreement between his far-right political party and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party. The civil administration is principally responsible for planning and construction in Area C of the West Bank, the 60% of the occupied Palestinian territories under full Israeli administrative and security control, as well as enforcement under, uh, as well as enforcement against unauthorized construction, whether by Israeli settlers or by Palestinians. The transfer of laws, which was largely unremarked upon in Israel, follows a years-long campaign by pro-settlement politicians to accrue many of the legal powers previously wielded by the military chain of command. The laws cover everything from building regulations to the administration of agriculture, forestry, parks, and uh, bathing locations. Lawyers have long warned that transferring them from, the mili from military to politi political control would risk bringing Israel into conflict with its responsibilities under international law. Well, I law. mean, there, there's a little bit of euphemism going on here. Like, the, the issue with why the West Bank and Gaza haven't been annexed in Israel isn't just because Israel uh, just, you know, was restrained, was restrained in land grabbing um, because that's not something they are capable of. The reason is because there's too many uh, Palestinians there and they do not want to incorporate them in their official demographics because that would be, lead the apartheid conclusion to be too clear uh because yeah. like when um amnesty international uh reached the apartheid conclusion they basically said look we're not gonna we're it's been uh 50 years we're not going to treat these territories as if they're not part of israel uh so you can pretend that oh look at these people within the proper israel that we give such good rights to right actually everybody counts and right. that's the problem here is the right wing of uh, israel doesn't care about uh world opinion about that matter they don't um, because they're fascists and they're trying to operate under a might equals right like mentality. And that's why they and have why to be they? stopped. It's all they've known. But it's all they've known. And, and, and they've never faced real consequences for it. Um, I, I think we're at a really critical point here. But to, to what you're saying, it's this fiction like Israel funds the Palestinian Authority, which runs the West Bank. And in retaliation for, I guess it was Norway, Spain, and I'm forgetting the third European country that recognized Palestine as a state at that one particular day or two day uh, 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 period, Ireland. Ireland. They uh, said, we're not funding the Palestinian Authority anymore. We're cutting off money to them, which, you know, like, that basically is the entirety of their funding because it's an occupying power and the Palestinian Authority is already basically rightly, I think, accused by Palestinian people as being a puppet for the Israeli government or at the very least heavily weakened yes. and compromised puppet. Um, puppet. And so they retaliated against three other states recognizing Palestine as a state by cutting off their funding. And a month ago, it was reported that the Palestinian Authority is going to run out of money. And that runs like civil society for people in the West Bank. And then at the same time, it's this news story that this freak Smotrich is being given more authority. So after entering government, Smotrich moved to quickly approve thousands of new settlement homes, legalize previously unauthorized wildcat outposts and make it more difficult for Palestinians to build homes and move around. Reports in the Israeli media say U.S. officials have privately discussed the possibility of imposing sanctions on Smotrich over his destabilizing impact on the West Bank, where he lives in a settlement that is illegal under international law. Netanyahu has become more reliant on the support of Smotrich and other far-right elements of his coalition's uh, government since the moderate former defense minister, Benny Gantz, quit Israel's emergency war cabinet in a row over strategy in the Gaza war and how to bring home Israeli hostages held by Hamas. Look, a lot of this is just like palatial theater 
to a degree. But that's what we were saying about Benny Gantz, like theatrically quitting. It meant nothing. It actually may have meant worse things. It just, well, actually, no, I think it meant nothing. It just made it more clear what the actual project is here. And um, Netanyahu being more reliant on the far right, that die has already been cast when he formed a coalition government with these people. Yeah. And these are also Netanyahu's aims. He just had to make a, do a political dance to basically appease people who may be a little bit queasy about a guy like Smotrich denying the existence of Palestinian people at all. Um, the, he had to make, he had to, to do branding that I'm not as bad as this guy, but in the end, their aims are exactly the same. And it's obvious because he's literally getting more power as we speak. Yeah, I mean, our entire life is Israeli society turning against the fiction that we need to appeal to the, the sort of liberal order and more just handing power to their fundamentalists and fascists, uh, you know, locally. And it's a, it's a logic that is predicted by people who talk about settler colonialism. And that's why proponents of Zionism have such a tough time and hate when people use that term because it actually accurately predicted all this. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.